All right, guys, Mr. B here, uh, and this is part two of analyzing star spectra. Uh, in the previous video, we took a look at uh, analyzing four stars using this gizmo here on uh, explorerlearning.com. We're gonna be using the same gizmo here again, but now we're gonna be looking at stars five through 10. Um, this is the student uh, handout sheet that goes with it. So the website for this will be linked in the description of the video along with the student handout. Again, I'm using a Chrome extension called Kami that lets me type on this. This is a PDF, so usually you couldn't type on it, but I can do so with my extension. Uh, it's free. If you want to download it from the Chrome store, you can do so. Okay, so um, we're going to get the gizmo ready and we're going to start at star number five and get going. So here we go. Let's turn on show labels, All right? So we're going to take a look at star five first. Uh, and it says here, what else can we learn from stellar spectra? So some of these stars are going to be a little bit unusual. Okay, so we're going to observe the spectra of stars five through 10. We're going to identify the elements in each spectrum and try to classify each star. Um, if we notice any unusual features, we're going to describe them. All right, so taking a look at star five, again, I'm going to pull some of these spectra down and lay them over um, above or below. Um, you can pause the video to try to see if you can figure out which elements are in the star. Okay, so here we go. Here's neutral hydrogen. Again, pause the video. Do you see if they line up? Here's neutral helium. Pause the video, see if it lines up. Here is neutral sodium. Here is neutral magnesium. Here is neutral calcium. And here is neutral iron. All right, then we'll take a look at the ionized ones. So again, pause the video here when I line up the spectra to see if that one is in the spectra. So here's ionized hydrogen. Here's ionized helium. Here's ionized sodium. Here's ionized magnesium. Here's ionized calcium. And here's ionized iron. Okay, so did you notice if any of those ones matched up? And if you look back, you might have seen that none of them matched up, sort of. So here's what I want to try doing. We're going to try grabbing hydrogen again, but we're going to do something interesting here. So what we're going to do is, if we take this and we move it over to the right, we shift it over, we're going to notice that these lines actually line up perfectly. It's just that they're kind of off center. And if we do that also for the sodium, so again, if we line it up and then we shift it over to the right, we're going to see the exact same thing. So we actually do have two elements here that line up perfectly. We have neutral hydrogen and neutral sodium, but they're kind of shifted to the right or shifted towards the red side of this spectrum. So on our handout here, um, for the color, we're actually going to take a look at just the color of the star right here. So this star here is yellow. So we are gonna write for color um, yellow. Elements that are in the spectrum. So we had hydrogen and neutral sodium. As for the class, let's scroll up here. So we said yellow, which means our class would be G. Uh, we do have neutral sodium here. It does say calcium and some other ionized ones, even though those ones weren't in there. Uh, but again, remember it did say note, a star spectrum may not display lines of all the elements typical of its spectral class. So it is, of course, common that maybe not all of these are going to be there, but we did have neutral sodium and hydrogen, and it does look like a yellow star. So class is going to be G. And the unusual feature here was um, the lines were shifted to the right or the red side of the spectrum, right? So again, they're shifted to the right, but this is the red side. So it's kind of weird. But, you know, again, we knew that these are going to be unusual, right? Looking at star number six, uh, that is this one. Okay, so um, again, we'll line up some spectra. And if you notice of any lineup, again, pause the video to see and make note of which elements that you notice. So there you go, here is hydrogen. And we'll shift it to just to see, does it look like anything is shifted? Okay, here is helium. Look like anything is shifted at all. 
Here is sodium. So it looks like anything is shifted. Here's magnesium. Again, it looks like anything is shifted maybe. Here is calcium. Look like anything is shifted at all. And here is iron. And again, it look like anything is maybe shifted. Okay, ionized ones. Here is ionized hydrogen. Ionized helium. Ionized sodium. Ionized magnesium. Ionized calcium. And ionized iron. Okay, so which ones did you notice? Now, one thing I noticed about this one is there actually were some elements that matched up really well. It was actually neutral calcium and neutral iron. But the weird thing was is that the lines on the spectrum were thinner than the lines on the calcium spectrum. So you kind of notice that these ones are a lot thinner and the normal ones are a lot thicker. So it's kind of weird. Uh, iron also matched up really well, but again, we kind of see the same thing where the lines on the spectrum are like really thin and the ones on the iron spectra are a lot thicker. So we're going to write that down as our unusual feature, but I think these are the two elements that we have, calcium and iron. So as for our color, the star is red. So for color, we're going to write red. Elements in the spectrum, I think we have our um, neutral neutral iron and neutral calcium. Um, if we scroll up for the class, the class if it's red should be M. We do see here it says neutral iron. It doesn't say neutral calcium, but iron is there, so that's fine. So class is gonna be M. And again, uh, unusual features, um, the lines were thinner than, or we'll say thinner slash thicker than normal. Okay, all right, looking at star seven, here we go. Star seven, uh, this one's not really so much a star. It kind of looks like a, like a big body of stuff. Um, also, here's something right away I noticed that's kind of weird. This is black, rather than being colored like this and the lines being black, instead it's black and the lines are colored. So it's kind of like it's flip-flopped or something. All right, well, again, let's line up our spectra. So here's our hydrogen. Here is our helium. Here is our sodium. Here is our magnesium. Here is our calcium. And here is our iron. Okay, and then we will take a look at the ionized ones. Here is ionized hydrogen. Here is ionized helium. Here is ionized sodium. Here is ionized magnesium. Ionized calcium. And ionized iron. Okay, so did you notice any particular that lined up? Um, if so, write them down. Back on our sheet, um, for color, because this isn't a star, we're gonna say uh, N slash A for not applicable, um, because it's not a star, it was a, a giant group of like stuff, so we can't really give that a color. Um, elements, the elements that I think lined up were um, hydrogen, neutral helium, and neutral sodium. Um, hopefully those are the same ones that, that you thought is lined up. Um, because it's not a star, it also doesn't have a class, so right, N slash A for not applicable. And the unusual features in this one, again, was um, the spectrum, uh, the spectrum was flip-flopped. So, like, the background was black instead of being colorful, and the lines were colorful instead of being black, so. 
Okay, I'm um, looking at star eight. Here is star eight. Okay. Um, huh. Right away, I kind of noticed something weird, and that's that this kind of is getting dimmer and brighter. So, like, right now it's really dim, and then now it's brighter. So that's kind of a weird feature. Um, anyway, again, let's line up our spectrum. So here is hydrogen. Here is helium. Here is sodium. Here is magnesium. Here is calcium. Here is iron. Okay, ionized ones. Here is ionized hydrogen. Ionized helium. Ionized sodium. Ionized magnesium. Ionized calcium. And ionized iron. Okay, so of these ones, um, the ones that I think lined up were neutral calcium and ionized iron. And other than this one getting really bright and really dim, I also noticed that some of these lines are kind of faded, right? Like these ones here are kind of faded out and these ones over here are a little bit more faded out, uh, whereas some of these other ones are like really thick and, and dark. So um, on our spectra, uh, for number eight, um, color, I guess, sorry, let's look back to color. Uh, the color is yellow, so we will choose yellow. Um, since we already chose yellow up here, the class is also going to be G, so we'll just write in G. Elements in the spectrum, um, again, I think there was neutral calcium and ionized iron. Unusual features. Um, the spectrum got brighter slash dimmer. Um, so like there, you know, it was getting bright and dim and it kind of kept doing that over and over. Okay, looking at star nine next. Uh, here's star nine. Okay, ooh, that's kind of strange. So here already I notice um, that these lines are moving and it looks like they're moving towards each other and then it looks like they're moving away from each other. So that's kind of weird. Anyway, let's see if we can line up some of these spectra. So here are the neutral ones. So there's neutral hydrogen. Okay, so does that line up? Here is neutral helium. Does that line up? Here is neutral sodium. Does that look to line up? Here is neutral magnesium. Does that one line up? Here is neutral calcium. Here is neutral iron. Okay, and then ionized ones. Here is ionized hydrogen. Here's ionized helium. Ionized sodium. Ionized magnesium. Ionized calcium. And ionized iron. All right, so even though these are moving, um, there are definitely some that lined up pretty well. Um, and the color of the star is white. So for number nine, we are gonna say white. Um, the class, so let's go up here to look at the white one. Um, now there's two white ones. Okay, so it might be best for us to put down the elements first that we think that I see. Um, I think in here we have hydrogen and neutral sodium. And um, so looking back up the top, uh, we have hydrogen and ionized sodium and ionized calcium in this one. We have hydrogen, ionized sodium, calcium, neutral sodium and calcium. So this one here also, this one specifically says neutral sodium, whereas this one is only ionized. Um, and I definitely think that we had regular sodium. So uh, I think this is gonna be class F for our white star here. And then unusual features, um, the lines were moving away in opposite directions. So like some were, you know, they're moving away like, like this, or they're moving towards each other and they were kind of doing this back and forth. Okay, last one here for number 10. So here's our last star. Oh, we also see that the lines are moving, um, but these ones all seem to be moving together. So you seem to be moving to the left together, 
and they seem to be moving to the right together. So they're not they're not moving apart and moving towards each other like this. They're all shifting together like this. All right, so let's line up our spectrum here. So here's regular hydrogen. Here's regular helium. Here's regular sodium. Here is regular um, magnesium. Here's regular calcium. And here is uh, regular iron. Okay, and then for ionized ones, here's ionized hydrogen. Here is ionized helium. Here is ionized sodium. Here is ionized magnesium. Here is ionized calcium. And here is ionized iron. Okay, so of those ones, which ones do you think matched up? As for color, the star looks like it is yellow. So we will say yellow. Um, class would be G. We've already had yellow twice now. And as for elements, I think we had neutral sodium and ionized calcium both matched up really well. And then unusual features, um, the lines were moving left slash right together. So they were moving together like this. All right, so now we're going to do this last part here. So it says, write the number of the star or object that matches each description, then use this information to help you identify the elements and reclassify the stars in the table above. So it says, high atmospheric pressures in a star cause spectral lines to be broadened or smeared out. Giant stars, which have relatively low atmospheric pressures, are characterized by narrow spectral lines. Well, we definitely had lines here that were thinner or thicker than normal. So that one sounds like it could be star six really easily. Um, if a star is moving away from an observer, spectral lines are red shifted or shifted toward the red end of the spectrum, an approaching star is blue shifted. So were there any that you see that you think were moving like toward the red side or the blue side? Or the red side or the blue side? If so, which one do you think it was? I think that it was star number 10. And that, oh, I'm sorry, uh, not star 10. I think this was star five. Um, even though star 10 was moving together left and right, star five was shifted toward the red side and it was just stuck there. Um, I think star 10 might pop up later. So a star orbited by a large planet will move in a small circle. This will cause its spectrum to be slightly red shifted part of the time and blue shifted at other times. Now this one sounds like star 10, where it was sometimes to the right or left and other times to the left or the right. And it kept doing this back and forth, right? So at some times it was to the red side, sometimes to the blue side. That one sounds like star 10. Binary stars are pairs of stars that orbit one another. Their presence is indicated by two spectra that shift in opposite directions. Ooh, so did we have any where the lines seem to move in opposite directions from each other? Yes, I think that one was star nine. Um, Cepheid variable stars change their brightness in a regular cycle. Gas pressure builds up, causing the stars to expand quickly. When the pressure is released, the star contracts and the intensity of some spectral lines may decrease. So did we have ones where the lines seem to get brighter and then dimmer and then brighter and then dimmer? Yes. I think this one was star eight. And then lastly, a nebula is an enormous cloud of gas and dust in which stars are born. Most nebulae produce an emission spectrum, which is characterized by bright lines of color against a dark background. The bright lines in an emission spectrum correspond to the dark lines in an absorption spectrum. So did we have one where it seemed like it was flip-flopped, right? Where the background was black rather than, rather than colorful. Yeah, that one sounds just like um, star number seven, which we already know wasn't a star, it was a nebula. That's why we didn't give it a color or a class. Okay, so hopefully this helps you learn more about star spectrum and how we can learn information from them other than just what elements are in there. Um, if you have any other questions about any of this, by all means, let me know and I can talk to you more about it. But otherwise, I hope you learned something from this one and uh, I'll see you in the next video.